Let's work on calculating a personal income tax for Marsha. Marsha works as a computer developer and makes $86,000 in the last year. Uh, she made $4,500 in some interest and investments. and had a lucky win in the lottery where she won $2,500. Marsha contributes to her retirement account, the maximum allowed for her this year. So $2,400 is going into her IRA, her individual retirement account. And she set up a flex spending account of $2,000 to cover, so this is our flex spending account, to cover health expenses for the year, paying for glasses, things like that. With this information so far, we should be able to calculate Marsha's adjusted gross income. Recall your adjusted gross income is the total income minus our specialized deductions. These are we call again the above the line deductions or pre-tax um, pre deductions. These are ones that get special care. All right, so in this case, her total income can be calculated by adding all the money in. So $86,000 in wages, $4,500 in interest, and a $2,500 lottery win. So if we add that together, we end up with $93,000 in total income. So this is the wages plus the interest plus the lottery win. Now, the specialized deductions that you that Marsha can make here are going to be the money that she set aside for her retirement account and for her health expenses. So her specialized deductions are going to be $2,400 plus $2,000. So she has $4,400 in specialized deductions. So her AGI is going to be the difference between those two, the $93,000 she made, but she gets special tax breaks for that $4,400 worth of retirement and health savings. This leads to an adjusted gross income of $88,600. The next thing that we need to do is look at and consider itemized deductions and standardized deductions. If Marsha went through and calculated all of her itemized deductions from mortgage interest that she's paying on the apartment that she owes, charitable donations made throughout the year, a variety of sales tax purchases, um, and things along that line, Marsha ended up coming up with an itemized list of $18,570. Now, we need to decide, is this going to be the best thing to use for the deduction, or is there the standard deduction going to be better in this case? To tell, what we have to do is we're going to have to look up what the standard deduction is for Marsha. Marsha's filing status is single, according to what we have here. So we're going to look at our 2023 deductions for single filers, and we find that, um, that Marsha can use as a standard deduction $13,850. All right, so if this is the case for what we're looking for here, notice that here, Marsha's itemized 
deductions end up being more than the standard deductions. So when we figure out Marsha's taxable income, we're gonna take the adjusted gross income, the AGI, and we're gonna choose to use this itemized deduction instead of the standard deduction here because it'll take more money off. When we get to this point, we're gonna be able to see that the taxable income is subtracting 18,570. Taxable income is gonna be $70,030. Okay, at this point then, it's time to figure out the taxes. And to do this, what we're gonna figure, look at is the tax from our table. Keep in mind that Marsha was a single filer, so make sure that you're looking at the single table. And we're looking for an income of $70,030. So if we're looking at our single filers, um, and our income of $70,030, we are here in the 22% tax bracket, right? $70,000 lies in that range there. So we're going to be looking at $5,147 plus 22% of the amount over 44725 Okay, so $5,147 plus 22% of the amount over 44,000. She was making 70,030. And so we're gonna subtract the 44,775, 725 from the table to get the amount of tax owed. If we pull, that, pull out our calculator and figure out what that's going to be, 5,147 plus 22% of that last tax bracket amount, which is coming from 70,030 minus 44,725, and we end up with $10,714.10. This is the amount of tax that Marcia is going to owe. Now we need to see how much she's gonna to have to come up with or pay in order to do stuff. Marsha was able to do some energy improvements in her home and qualified for a $1,200 tax credit. Again, things that earn tax credits vary from year to year. So in this case, we can apply this $1,200 to how much we owe. And so Marsha's gonna owe a little bit less now. She's gonna owe $9,514.10. Now, her employer had to set aside some money for taxes. If you look at the tax totals, her employer had set aside, had been regularly taking this money out of their paycheck so that there would be some funds here when we got to tax time. The employer had set aside <clears throat> Well, what's going to happen? She owes $9,514, but only now has $8,050.20 that can be applied. That means she's still going to owe some money, right? She owes more than she has. To figure out how much she owes, we'll just find the difference. She was owing $9,514.10. We're going to subtract that $8,050.20 and we'll get how much money she's going to have to come up with when she files her taxes. 9514.10 minus 8050.20. So when she submits her taxes, she'll also need to include a check for $1,463.90 to cover 
what had already been set aside.